All right. November 28th, 2023, approximately 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just picked up my car. So, the squeak is gone. I'm happy it was only a strut mount and a stabilizer arm. I was afraid that it was going to be the entire tire strut or maybe the shock but this strut which means two struts but it was not so this will still be a noisy video but it'll be a little bit more quiet and less squeaky than the ones for the past couple of weeks since I got back from my trip but I got a quick little 15 minute 20 minute drive home so I figured I'd I make a little video here because I was just thinking about and it stinks I, and maybe I got a release before the first or more than one a day because some of these videos are they're timely in the fact that you can look back on them and still learn but they're time sensitive in the fact that I would like people to have this information so they can course correct immediately you know when you're making a mistake you want to course correct as soon as possible and so when I, I I had thought or I braced myself for like I was getting my oil changed in the front end stuff and I really I, I don't know into my gut I was like ah, it's gonna probably be over 2,000 if it hits 3,000 I won't be surprised because it's it's lifetime warranty Volvo parts and it's Volvo mechanics and the hourly and everything and just uh, you know the parts are expensive and so they call me up because they need to get authorization past the oil change after they've diagnosed what it is and <laughs> and the the woman on the phone is talking to me and she's she's like bracing me for the price I was like uh oh here we go this is gonna be rough and you know, it's almost like, you know, she's going to tell me a loved one passed or whatever. Or my children are going to starve. And then she's like, it's it's going to be an additional 640 something dollars on top of the oil change. And I was like, oh, phew. I was like, yeah, pay, pay it out. No big problems. Yeah, go do it. And I'm blessed enough that that's not any sort of life-changing money to me at all. Uh, but the way that I'm starting to notice how people are, are speaking about groceries, money, their life, the videos that I'm seeing online, it's pretty clear that... So they're going to change the definitions around as far as, you know, recession... And they're gonna and they're gonna they're gonna cook the books on GDP versus income versus inflation, so that as things change, they don't seem too bad, and people are gonna be working behind the scenes, um, so that especially before the election, when they got the people that they want there, that it doesn't turn into a depression. Now, what may happen is if the people they don't want in office end up getting, they might start uncooking the books, in which case they'll be like, oh, now that so-and-so that's a Republican took over, we've, we're in a depression. We were getting out of it with no inflation, and now all of a sudden, out of nowhere, inflation's gotten so big. And they are hiding the inflation in some ways because every you know a cause has an effect and an effect has a cause so like uh they're calling it shrinkflation i was in the pool jerry i was in the pool jerry yes like a frightened turtle that's for anybody those for gen xers maybe gen z's they're real re-experienced re sign though but shrinkflation for those that don't know is when instead of raising the price 
they slightly lower what you're receiving and keep the price the same or sometimes they slightly raise the price and slightly lower what you're receiving so for instance if you were buying six can six ounce cans of tuna for five dollars all these years they might turn it to five and a quarter and then make it uh, you know five and three quarter ounces so you lose a quarter of tuna and you pay an extra quarter of US currency so the shrinkflation is giving you less for for either the same price or more or when they're really wily is they shrink it a lot and they lower the price a little bit but you're actually still getting less than what you were paying for before I know we're drinking chemicals with natural flavors I'm a mess but they were free at the place I was at so I guess what I wanted to say is it, it, it does sadden me and it's hard to watch these videos of people online that have been so plugged into the system now I don't feel completely sorry for them because they've been calling me a Nazi conspiracy theorist racist sexist for the past you know three decades and I've been you know having conversations with this in public I used to have conversations online up until 2015 and some of my social media got disappeared uh, but now I got a better plan when I come back better plan stand I failed to plan last time this time I plan not to fail but what I would say is you were on the conveyor belt you know what I mean and, th and this was you know most people that pay attention to the, the real world and not to the truncated version that the news presents saw this coming so you know there's a women on there that's like I did everything you said I went to high school I spent $160,000 on a gender studies degree I make good money I make $32,000 a year how can I not afford a mansion why am I not a Kim Kardashian yet and it's like so I don't really feel bad for that all right so I'm gonna give you some advice if you've been on the plantation continue you can continue to pretend you're on the plantation don't let them know you you've unplugged why you set up the plan and I think a lot of times when people hear libertarian and preppers they think, oh, there's these crazy hermits that want to go live in the cabin in the woods and drink water from a stream and grow vegetables and just hunt. And we can't do that. And that is propaganda as well. So that's a hard, that's a hard end, die, like do or die Mad Max mentality. And there is some people that would, would love to try that. And it's a joke and it's a meme online. But the word prepper doesn't just mean to have, you know, 600 pounds of potatoes and a, uh, a statue of the Virgin Mary made out of sugar stored on your property for the apocalypse. Prepping just means that you're preparing for the changes that are going to come based on your own critical thinking, not what you're being told. So. Now, in real life, you're seeing the currency now being inflated, all right? Let's say you don't believe it's inflated. Let's say you do believe it's because of supply chain issues from COVID. Let's say you believe it's from supply chain issues because of uh, Russia and Ukraine. Let's say you think it's because of supply chain issues from Israel and Palestine, okay? That's fine. You can think that. But I, I'll just have it do a little research. Look at the, the, the buying power of the US dollar. Go online, type this into the intronet, the, the World Wide Web if it is, and look and see the buying power of the US dollar 
over the past year, two years, three years, four years, so on and so forth. And then determine if you want to keep, keep putting your faith into that monetary currency. And then they keep telling you that Bitcoin's a scam or that cryptocurrency is a scam or that Bitcoin cash is a scam. And, they, and the way they represent that is they keep showing people that have scammed people. So, like, when Bernie Madoff scammed a bunch of people, they didn't say, well, the U.S. dollar is a, a failure. Look at how many people Bernie Sanders scammed because of dollars. It's like, well, no, he was a bad person that scammed people. So when Sam Bankman freed created a Ponzi scheme to print money out of thin air, which was actually just stealing money from people via direct inflation and giving it to the Democratic Party. He was basically padding, he was becoming a single donor and he was he was illegally decentralizing uh, funding. He was crowdsourcing funding, lying that it was one thing, and really he was collecting funding like a a crypto super PAC and giving it to uh, democratic elect uh, uh, politicians. So he scammed people using crypto and now it's crypto's fault. No, this he's Bernie Sanders. It's not necessarily the currency's fault. Okay? Now, the difference is if you look into the, the structure of the blockchain or cryptocurrency, they're finite structures and so they can't be inflated directly. They can be manipulated because not enough people have them right now. So there's major players that own enough that they can manipulate the markets. But the technology is solid. And I'm not saying you have to put it into a cryptocurrency. It could be a gold, it could be platinum, it could be the yen, it could be uh, it could be pesos. Well, I don't know where you want to put your money. I'm not saying that you have to put it anywhere. You could keep it in USD. It is your decisions to make. I don't give financial advice. But if you go online and just look at the buying power of the currency that you're currently using, whatever it may be, and then search another couple of currencies that are being used and see what their buying power is up to. And then maybe type into the internet and say, which current currency has the highest uh, buying power right now? And you'll start seeing a pattern on your own. Hopefully you can still pattern recognize. And if you can't, then what you need to do is go online and go on to a, either a tube site like YouTube if you like to watch videos or go on to a, a audio cast site if you like to listen to audio versions of stuff or if you like to read go read some articles on it whatever your preferred learning technique is find somebody that you trust that's doing okay and is a place that you would want to be to the best of your knowledge when you vet them and see what they're doing and if you can follow their lead, you'll probably end up in the same situation as them. Now, for me, when I did this for my life, which was over a decade ago, I said, oh, okay, writing's on the wall. They're just going to keep printing money. And if you have, you know, you have one unique item and it's worth whatever that unique item is, is. And then you make a copy of it, it just lost its some value. And you make a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth. Now you make 34 trillion of those items. The value of that item depletes greatly. Now, I won't get into some pragmatic ways that they could slow this down, or maybe I, maybe I could because it would help you to buy some time. But like they could start asking places like the Ukraine and Israel and say, look, if we're going to continue to fund your wars via the UN and NATO, then you got to adopt USD 
um, and is sharing part of this inflation with us because it's not fair that we're inflating the US dollar and you're not inflating the shekel uh, to fight these wars. So they could do that. If they would do that, they would get more customers and a little bit more demand would be added to the US dollar, which would be a stopgap for a broken, huge broken system. But once you do this research and stuff, you've got to start making plans. So if you were having problems right now buying groceries, okay? So here's some rubber hits the road stuff for you. Like I said, I wish I could get this out early, but this is probably won't be out to January, February, March. And now it's November. So I apologize, but my life comes first and I try to do this stuff in the past and no one supported me and I got kicked off and I had to rearrange my life so I could do this somewhat safely and not be attacked. <laughs> so it is what it is now. So if you're having problems buying groceries, you need to change the way you buy groceries to the best of your ability. And most people only learn that as far as saying, there's two ways you can do it. You can change the location of where, there's multiple ways, but here's, here's a couple of plans. If you live in an area right now where the groceries are expensive and there's places where groceries are cheaper, you can move. This is probably not going to be a great long-term solution unless you're jumping countries. If you are currently not making enough money to buy groceries at these rates or whatever, you could, and you're working like a nine to five or, or, or uh, a job, you probably going to want to switch over to some sort of business because if you're just trying to exchange your time for energy and energy for money to buy food, then you're always just burning calories to get more calories and you're just going to get stuck. And if you're not getting a raise that's at a higher percentage than the inflation, you just never catch up. You'll never get enough calories. Then you'll either end up on uh, government assistance, which is them printing money and giving it to you, which is going to create more inflation, which is going to expand the problem even harder, put you in the same situation. But now you're even more dependent on the same system that's collapsing than you were prior. You could figure out a business where you put in less time, less energy, and get more resources back to offset it so you're on the other side. So, you, you know, it's just calories out, calories in. So you need to make more calories and store more calories to buy more calories in the future. You could also figure out better ways to decrease the amount that you're paying for your food and stuff. So, I mean, I have easily six seven eight months of of inexpensive food at my house that i can eat so most of it revolves around dried beans i have four or five six seven eight i have about 10 different types of dried beans i have two or three different types of rices two or three different types of grains like uh, quinoa uh teff uh just different hydrating grains that you can use uh, a bunch of dried spices and between all those different types of beans and all those different types of grains and stuff you can make your carbs and you can make your proteins and then really all I need to do when I go to the store is I'm buying uh, you know fresh protein and vegetables and if you can't afford fresh you can get some stuff that's uh, immediately fresh to frozen uh, vegetables for your produce and you know steam steam and cook that that stuff for yourself and you can buy it in in bulk in that manner um, you get on YouTube and you learn how to cook this is what's crazy is I'm hearing people complain about how the cost of food has gone so high and I talked to them a little bit and they're door dashing and um, grub hubbing two or three times a day so it's like, well, no crap. Like I eat a, um, twice a week I get, I buy a, a vegan, this big vegan sandwich from this place we have called Press Cafe here in New England, which I really like. I go play poker. And then once I'm up, 
I order a sandwich, it forces me to leave, and then I go get the sandwich and eat it. And these are big, healthy sandwiches. So it's like this big, it's a hoagie. It's made on fresh panini bread. And it's got like, it comes with avocado and lettuce, tomato, onions, you can add whatever you want. You can get bean soup on the side, a banana, apple, all this stuff. It's similar to like, um, it's like a really nice or a nicer Panera bread. But anyways, when I do order that stuff for pickup, and this is high quality food, but it's just a sandwich and um, a banana, that's $14 without a tip. So I get that twice a week. Um, I'm looking at $28, right? And then I can buy, I can go to the bulk store, either the Asian store that we have here or the Southeast Asian store and buy bulk rice and buy bulk beans and bulk spices. And I could get beans, rice, and spices for a whole month for $28, so if people are buying McDonald's and pizza and Subway and uh, Starbucks and everything every day and then complaining about their food, honestly, good, starve to death. <laughs> like, and the other thing, too, I will say is people are eating a lot of empty calories, obviously. But if, when I take a look at these people that are telling me they can't buy any food, uh, their phys the visual evidence is, is telling me something different. I don't think, I think some of these people, it could actually help their health if they were missing a meal or two a day. If you know what I'm, hey, if you know what I'm saying, eh? Eh? <laughs> so I get it. People are not, uh, they're overeating calories and under eating nutrients. So there's a lot of people that are overweight that are not um, necessarily, they're overeating um, empty calories, but they're not overeating. The reason their body's asking them for more and more food is because they're not getting the nutrients. So they're getting a signal that they need more nutrients and they're eating and the body's like, no, we got we got grains undercover. We got bread and or we got enough bread and Oreo cookies down here. Uh, I need I need some green leafy vegetables and some nutrients. You have you heard of vitamins and minerals? Could I get a vitamin and mineral down here, please? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I got some vitamin A from some Oreo cookie cream two weeks ago. But uh, I was I was really really hoping I'd get a little selenium down here, maybe a little beta carotene, so I can <laughs> so I don't have glasses at 14 years old. Uh, but I digress. So I shouldn't. I, I mean, whatever. Everything's everything can be made into a joke. So I say this in kindness to people. Is that I mean, the idea of even prepping is ridiculous because you should just be preparing for life. So everybody should be a prepper. You should be looking at your life today. You should be looking at your life over the past six months. And you should be looking out your life a minimum of six months forward, if not a year. And just saying, okay, last six months to this six months, it's exactly the same in the last 12 months of days, they're exactly the same and nothing's changing. So something needs to be changed. And maybe many of you don't have that mental capacity to do that. But once you do, you say, okay, I'm going to look up and I'm going to be empathetic. Most people say they're empathetic and they're not. And you're going to be empathetic to your future self. And you're going to say, all right, I want my future self to be X, Y, and Z. So what does present self have to do so that future self can get X, Y, and Z. And if you're having a problem with food and resources and stuff, then it's time to change one of the things I talked about earlier. The easiest thing that I think for you to do is see where you're starting with food and write down a list of everything that you're eating, everything you're doing and everything you're buying. Write down a list of everything you have in your cabinets and stuff like that. And then... 
figure out some foods that you like that will last. Um, some of you might be more comfortable buying uh, canned goods rather than dried goods. I highly recommend uh, a dark, dry place or with glass containers or dark glass containers like colored glass containers that are tinted so there's less light to get in them they have sealed tops and like i said i have a bunch of them so i, I made chili yesterday so i threw i have an instapot and i threw some black beans some white beans some red beans in there i had some spices and then i had some vegetable broth i let it cook for two hours and now i'm going to go up and i'm going to have a very inexpensive chili that probably it was like a quarter of a cup or less of each of the beans and it's going to be at least two servings for two meals so i would say that i don't know where i spend two dollars each on those to make those meals they're going to be filling they're going to be full of carbs and full of protein maybe i'll make some um rice like some lemon or some lemon lime rice with cilantro or something and throw that chili on top of it um and that's gonna be what a dollar more tops 50 cents i don't know it's it's so cheap it's hard to even to quantify compared to going to chipotle and getting something similar and it's like 10 11 12 13 dollars depending on what you get for for the bowl granted it's a lot more so maybe Maybe if you're eating a bowl of Chipotle a day rather than cooking, if you don't have the utensils at first, that would be cheaper for you. I doubt it in the long run. Because like I said, you get a whole bag of beans, so it's a pretty good business model for them. I don't know. I guess I'm just going to end it here. It's getting a little longer than I thought, almost 30 minutes. I'm starting to get repetitive, which I tend to do. But it's going to get ingrained into your brain. The takeaway is... Instead of going online and complaining about, I'm clapping back at you, <laughs> sassy black girl magic. Instead of going online and complaining, which it maybe it'll make you feel better in the moment and you'll get some stuff. Go write down a list of the things you're doing. Write down where you want to be, just like GPS, and then write down some systems in order to get you there. And then decide which is the easiest system to you. And then to start. And then to probably do all of them. So if it was me. This is how I've set my life up over the past. Probably 10 years now. Work for myself. Somewhat mobile. Able to move around if need be. And still make an income. Um, six to eight months worth of food on hand. Not the best food, so I do buy food as needed during the week for happiness, you know, enjoyable stuff. But I'm talking about survival, having six to eight months of survival food on hand. Independent, not exchanging my time for money. So you, you got to figure out a business or a system or an investment strategy that allows you to um, make money based on like investment or business. So you're getting, you're reaping huge rewards for your time effort. Um, and then I think that's it. Oh, and then figure out what currency you wanna be and how you wanna be saving. Because look, if you wanna keep putting into an IRA and keep buying stocks, I'm not gonna stop you, but I would go online and I would look at those stocks and they can, can say to you, the stocks have gone up and you look at the stock market and the stocks go up every year and you say, okay, but then I want you to go look at the U S dollar that those stocks are being bought in and tell me if that's going up at a rate high enough to counterbalance, you know what I mean? So if you're gaining 5% a year, on a stock, but then you're losing 10% a year on a currency, 
or 7%, then you're not really making any money because those get cashed out into cash. But if you're putting, if you're getting USD, for instance, and it's losing 5%, and then you're buying uh, Bitcoin with it, and over the past year, Bitcoin went up 30%. If you put all your, if you exchange all your money into just Bitcoin and let it sit there, it would have went up 30%. In the meantime, when you sold it back into USD, you would have gotten more USD for it to buy the stuff that you needed. So you could double dip. As the currency goes down and Bitcoin goes up, you're double dipping on both sides. So you take your USD and you buy 100 and then you go up, Bitcoin goes up to, you know, that 100 turns into 125, right? And then you cash it out and the buying power has gone down again. So now you get more when you cash it out and you've saved that extra percentage. Whatever you bought is now double cheaper. I'm not explaining that well, but you're winning on both ends instead of losing on both ends, basically. Um and if this is too much trouble and this is too much stress for you or whatever, then sit back and let other people run your life. But as it turns out terrible, because other people don't really give a crap what happens to you, um, realize that you could do something or could have done something about it. And maybe all you want to do is complain and hope somebody fixes it for you. But let me know how that works out. So, all right. Take care.